Absolutely delighted now to be joined by Javier Hughes. Uh, Javier, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. So you're the first uh, Chief Technology and Innovation Officer at the ICMA. I am. I'm super excited to be here. Um, it's an incredible opportunity. I'm joining an organization that's so just forward-looking, forward-thinking, and having the opportunity to work with Mark Ott, our executive director, uh, with the rest of the leadership team, and have direct exposure to all of our members is just a dream come true. So as we said, it's the first uh, first time somebody's had this uh, title at the ICMA. So, so briefly, what does the job uh, entail? The job is really interesting, and it's quite dynamic, um, especially when you know it's 2018. If it would have been 2013, it would have been a different job different sure. with different dimensions. Uh, First and foremost, I have a responsibility to ICMA headquarters to make sure that uh, I maintain, upgrade, and optimize all of our systems, right? So we, are, we represent a lot of people. We provide services and products to a lot of people. And we want to make sure that those systems and those product offerings are up to date and they're reliable. Uh, second, and, and uh, more importantly, I have an innovation agenda. And that innovation agenda uh, impacts every single one of our members and uh, their constituencies and their communities. So anywhere uh, across people, policy, data, technology, and business processes, all that is covered through my agenda. And I work very, very closely with our partners, our strategic partners, I work closely with our members to make sure that we generate the appropriate tools so like that they can benefit their communities can benefit, their constituents can benefit, and they can be future-proof. My goal is for every single one of our members to be future-proof. Now, that's quite a wide and quite a, a broad is. ambition, isn't it? Give, us some, give me some examples, maybe, of, of, of how you put that to work. Sure, so as we know in the, in the urban uh, data space, um, so far over the past three years in urban tech, there's been $72 billion invested uh, from venture capital and private equity. <coughs> What that has resulted is the, in the true democratization of state-of-the-art technology, a lower barrier to entry, uh, lower price structure, lower complexity. Um, we have tools that can now connect with more of the 15-year-old uh, you know, systems, 10-year-old systems, 5-year-old systems, and today's you know, uh, newest technology. So I, my responsibility is to really focus on that area and provide, from that urban tech uh, point of view, the right data products, the right logistics products, the right performance management products to all of our members. So it's it's a, a, an intense agenda and a, a really aggressive agenda, but something that I think everybody will truly benefit from. And a quick example of that, just to really memorialize it, is something we're coming out with called Datasphere. And Datasphere will be the largest collection of urban tech data in the continental US. We'll have detailed uh, government data from across 4,000 individual communities uh, that will impact millions upon millions of people. So that's one concrete example of how we're democratizing this data and these products for the betterment of our communities and our members. A lot of your uh, members, a lot of the communities are small, are small communities. How important is it for these small towns, these small counties to be abreast of uh, changes in technology? Truly critical because uh, the majority of vendors focus on the large metropolis, right? I mean, you have to be strategic about it, and you put on their, you know, if you see it from their point of view, those are large budgets, large RFPs, large opportunities, why wouldn't they focus sure. on that? They don't focus as much on the small markets, right? Small to medium markets. And when they do, they encounter a lot of, um, they encounter a lot of difficulties because those communities don't have the budgets to upgrade their systems right. or to procure state-of-the-art solutions like the big cities can. So from that point of view, it's truly just my responsibility to provide that digital literacy, that data literacy, that data science literacy, so like that they're, they, they understand what's going on, uh, they can procure the right solutions, the right services, and they can stay ahead of the curve so they're not taken by surprise. So that's that's one key responsibility that I have to our members. Okay. Well, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us today. My anyway, really appreciate it and best of luck with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. ICMA TV has plenty more exclusive content from the conference which you can check out using the links to the right. Be sure to check back each day for brand new interview stories and coverage from the show. You can also travel back in time and revisit 12 years of ICMA TV by checking out our channel.